Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Terrestrial biomes. Terrestrial means land biomes. Terrestrial biomes, as like tundra and tiger. And there's desert and chaparral and grasslands, uh, tempered deciduous forests. We live in temperate zone. And there's tropical rainforest. So, way up in the top are the tundra and taiga. And uh, we, as I said, we live in a tempered deciduous forest. That's why leaves fall uh, for us. In. So there are two things that determine, there are two things that determine what kind of a, a ecosystem will evolve in that geographical area. One is temperature. One is temperature. The other one is annual precipitation. What does that mean? Rain, basically rain and different forms of rain. What are other forms of rain on earth? <laughs> what are different forms of rain? Yes, snow, sleet, hail, right? These are all, so that's what's called precipitation, not, not rain, because precipitation can come in the form of snow. How much rain do you get? <laughs> Nothing. We just got 12 feet of snow last week. <laughs> yeah? Precipitation. So, now look, look carefully. If you have, if it's very hot, if it's very hot and very wet, what do you get? What do you get? Tropical rainforest. If it's very hot and very dry, what do you get? Desert. And precipitation depends on altitude and, this and, and many other things. Okay, because one geographical location affects the ge another geographic location. For example, there's a mountain here. The weather on this side of the mountain is different from the weather on that side of the mountain. Do you understand? So there's a lot of factors that affect precipitation. So very hot, lots of water, tropical rainforest. If you go to rainforest, it rains a lot. And hence, rainforest, hot and hot and humid, terrible. But you go to desert, like you go to Saudi Arabia, hot, no rain. No trees! Yes? Because it's hot and it's humid and rainy. And then it rains and it's still hot. So we're kind of like in the cozy zone. Yeah? Not terribly hot. And we get rain, right? So, temperate force right this. Now look at this grasslands. Grasslands, right? Grasslands are kind of our same temperature as us, right? That makes sense, right? If you go west over here, west from here, you get grasslands, right? Straight west. Right? Straight west, you get grasslands. So same temperature as us, but they don't get as much rain. You would think they would get a lot of rain if it's a lot of grass, right? You would think that they would get a lot of rain if they have a lot of grass, right? Yes? 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 Man, if they got a lot of rain, they would have trees. You understand? They don't get a lot of rain. They don't get as much rain as we do. Otherwise, they would have trees. Yeah? It's beautiful, right? It's all logical. That's the beauty of it. If you, you have to think through this, you just can't memorize stuff because it's, there's no beauty in that. If you understand it, there's beauty in it. Yes. Now look, you go to Canada, north of Canada. But let's say if somebody went to Canada, way up there, very cold and very a lot of precipitation in TNT. Is there a lot of precipitation there? No. There's not a lot of precipitation. There's not a lot of rain, and there's not a lot of Snow. So how come there's snow over there? Snow doesn't melt. Very good. It doesn't melt. It uh, this is glaciers form over years and years and decades and hundreds of years. Snow comes doesn't melt. Snow comes doesn't melt. Snow comes because it doesn't get warm enough. So it's very cold up there. Not a lot. It's, so it's not like you're going to go up there. It's going to snow every day. It's not a likely chance. It's not going to. True false. It's likely that if you go visit the North Pole, it's not going to snow. True, it's likely not going to snow, but it's not going to get warmer either. So, the beauty about Earth's climate and temperature is that it's not as easy to it's comp complex. The part of it is the tilt of the Earth. So, at equatorial zones, sunlight strikes mostly directly like this. Up here in the northern hemisphere, sunlight goes at an angle like that, and in the southern hemisphere, it goes at an angle like this. That's why we have why. That's why we have what. The tilt of the earth is responsible for what? Seasons. Seasons. The, the tilt of the earth is responsible for the seasons. The seasons are reversed okay, at the north and southern hemisphere. The latitude, 
the latitude is how far away from your or from the equator the latitude single most important determinant factor in climate and climate community in other words okay you go south it's going to get warmer can you pretty much say that is a guarantee yes is it universally no because if you're climbing up high altitude it's going to get colder right but the same level plane from here to go to kentucky and then you go to florida warmer go to jamaica warmer yes lay up on the top this is really cool stuff in my mind right tundra okay you gotta know this tundra okay tundra way up on the top there's no trees in the tundra you see any trees let's spot them not a single tree there's no tree over there for the same reason there's no tree in the grassland why not enough precipitation so long summer days short period of winter sunlight yes sir now don't, this is very important only topmost layer of soil falls beneath is this permanent frost permanently frozen ground it's like rock it's permanently frosted plants can't dig roots deep in there so that's called permafrost permafrost is defrosting because of global warming the communities are changing uh, it doesn't mean that there are no living things there. The polar bears, right? He's a rabbit. So these are these are t typical tundra food web over here, grasses and rabbits and, and <coughs> eagles over here. It looks like pretty interesting. If you go to like Canada, this is what you see. They have evergreen forests. Evergreens are also known as boreal or coniferous forests. Cone, coniferous, cone bearing cones. They have cones. If you go north to Canada, you see coniferous forest. Now we have evergreens here, right? We have evergreens. It's very interesting. Go outside, okay? Look, look. You will see evergreens. Yes? You'll see evergreens. In fact, this is very interesting. Drive to Wisconsin from here. You will see a change in the the, uh, the flora. You will see a change in the ecosystem. The farther north you drive into Wisconsin, there will be more evergreens. So we are in fact in a transition zone between the taiga, which are evergreens, versus the deciduous forest, trees that lose, lose leaves. Right? Evergreens are evergreens because they don't lose leaves, right? Do they ever lose leaves? Yes, they lose leaves. I mean, you get all the leaves, but they don't lose these all at one time. You understand? The evergreen needle, the pine needle, the needle, is so designed because it prevents loss of water. Why do they need to prevent loss of water, though? Very good. There's not enough water. It looks very green, but not that much precipitation. Yes. Here you can clearly see a distance over there is the tundra, and here's the taiga. See, no trees? trees see there's a transition it's kind of cool right ah uh, life one of the things that you notice is the diversity of life increases as you as you come closer here's desert this is the Atacama desert in Chile Chile you would think is chilly but it's not chilly it's very hot <laughs> this is actually apparently the world's driest plate they get like 0 0.004 inches of rainfall per year yeah the driest place on the planet that's the reason why it's so green i mean so not green no now there are different types of deserts mind you there are different types of deserts clearly this desert is not the same as this 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 desert this is more like arizona uh new mexico colorado type desert and and that's not that's not the same desert like, like in uh in africa or south right there are different types of deserts and also it doesn't mean that the desert does not have life right for example there's these bush bushes the cresciuti bushes like here so the the not all desert have like 0, 0.000 inches of rain some of them have rain and there's lots of wildlife in deserts you just see like rattlesnakes right every movie has rattlesnakes scorpions those just can actually can have quite a bit of wildlife so desert trees have a lot of adaptations for example the root system of the cactus for example like over here common root system the roots dig deep right but cactus root system grows horizontally like this way 
because that's where the water is. So they have adaptations. A kangaroo rat does not drink water, period. It gets water from its food because most living things are like 70% water. Grasslands, pretty, but no trees. So compared to 0 0.004, they get 25 to 70, this is centimeters of precipitation. They're also known as prairies, savannas, and steppes. Uh, it has a dry season, so the forests don't, don't form. See, for forests to survive, there have to be a lot of water. Grasslands, got it? Grasslands. Temperate forest, this is where we are. This is temperate deciduous forest. Compared to 25 to 35, whatever, to 7150 some. That's like three times as much water as the grasslands. Yeah? So we get a quite a bit of precipitation, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So temperate deciduous forest precipitation, 75 to 150 some annually, quite a bit. Uh, for trees and things to survive, they have to have rich topsoil. See, soil has a lot of nutrients for trees. Of course, how's the trees going to grow? It's not going to grow shopping jewel, right? Because it's going to go get all the stuff it needs from the soil, right? And the nutrients that it needs from the soil. So the very rich top part of the soil is called hummus. Not the same hummus as you get from Jerusalem Cafe. The different hummus. <laughs> and the deeper layers clay. So the word deciduous for it, what does the word deciduous mean? Fall. The leaves fall. You know what? Baby teeth? Baby teeth? They're called deciduous teeth. Deciduous teeth that fall, fall. Deciduous teeth. Uh, these are, uh, yeah, of course, you guys know what kind of a life over here. Beautiful. Season changes, leaf changes. Tropical rainforest. I think last. Look at the uh, rain they get. Two hundred to six hundred summers of rain annually. That's like. Lots of rain, okay? It is the most biodiverse of all places. There's something different about this picture. What do you think? Anything jumps out at you? It's packed, right? Isn't it packed? It looks like, hey, it's like cozy, right? Yes or no? And this is just not like one picture. It's every, every place like that, right? It's the most biodiverse of all places on the planet. What does that mean? Biodiverse. Very biodiverse. Why is it like that? Why is it like that? Biodiversity, three reasons speculated to why it is such like that. Well, number one is this area was spared from the ice age in the last time. If the glaciers cover a good part of the earth, that's what I mean by ice age. The tropical rainforest area, as you can see over here, okay, like England over here was covered by glacier. We were covered by glacier. In the last ice age, we were covered by glacier good part of the year. But this area, the tropical rainforest area, was spared by the glaciers. Therefore, the communities were able to continue. Their lives were not disrupted. They continued to evolve. That's one reason. Got it? So one reason for the biodiversity of the rainforest is that it was spared by the, uh, by the last ice age. The second thing, the trees are not deciduous. That's very cool. The trees, they don't lose their leaves, period. It's not a deciduous forest. Trees don't lose leaves. That's pretty amazing if you think about that. A big deal with that. I mean, there's food all, the way, all year around for animals. Like you take the sandwich out of the fridge, you close it next to the sandwich, it's back again. Yes? The habitat is where a living thing lives out its life. And they have multitude of habitat, meaning there are different habitats in the same area. And what does that mean? For example, there are living things that live in this lower area, in the ground layer, that never go up higher. That's their habitat. And then there are living things that's like they're, okay, I live in the second floor over here, right? They never go down. They don't care to go down. They go down, but I mean, I'm saying, yeah? It's their habitat. It's like having like a ecosystem on top of ecosystem on top of an ecosystem on top of an ecosystem. Does that make sense? So, it's like having four ecosystems in one, right? So there's a ground layer, and then there's a second subcanopy, there's a canopy layer, and then there's the emergent layer, see? Layer one, layer two, layer three, and layer four. Got it? Cool. All right, so this is a summary slide. So we talked about different types of uh, terrestrial body. We talked about the tundra, the taiga, and the coniferous forest, the desert, the temperate deciduous forest, the grasslands, and the tropical rainforest.
That's it. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.